Hey everybody, welcome back to Three Swords Productions. If you're new to the channel, I'm Steven and this is Chad. Tonight we're going to do commentary over a kind of a fun matchup. And I know that's Nathan's line, but this one actually is pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty exciting to see at least one new leader kind of just touch the board. So, New leader is right, because at the end of set two, we have found the goat. And that might be a lie. <laughs> the goat? Uh... I don't know. Is this the best red leader? I'll let you decide. Ready? <laughs> Yeah, let's jump into it. All right, I'm going to decide for you. It's Uda. It's not the best red leader, but Law might be. Law might be, and Uda might be some spice. Uh, solid tier four. Yeah, it's pretty low on the spectrum, but you know. Uh, but that's okay. So uh, on my side, you know, I sh I'm shuffling my hand right now. You're going to see a eight. Boat, a Moby Dick there. Um, we are playing a boat build of Uda, as you do not need to be playing a Whitebeard leader in order to use the ability of boat. Just have Whitebeard characters on the board. So Uda is going to utilize the vanilla Whitebeard characters um, for her own ability, as well as getting some duality action there from the Moby Dicks. Yep, exactly. And then the whole idea is really just to kind of play your normal Whitebeard game, uh, except you don't have to take life every turn, so you don't have to be as... You know, frugal with how you take life. That kind of makes you like a 10 life leader, right? No. Not at all. Okay, no. Great. However, <laughs> you know, being able to play Whitebeard on nine and then still be at four life if you are there is pretty dang good. That's true. That is, I mean, that is that is pretty solid. Um, so, okay, you went first and you went with the Jory Bonnie. Um, so when you're keeping your opening hand against a random deck like Uda, you know, what are you, what's going through your head in, in matches like that? Because you clearly, you have no idea what my strategy is about to be. Does that influence you? Yes and no. So like, no, in the sense that you're really still just trying to build the best hand for any scenario. So you really just want, you know, good searchers. Uh, you saw in the opening hand that I tossed back that there were two Namis. Uh, and the reason why I did not keep that it's simply because there were no green cards in that hand. Um, this current list, this current list um, that I'm playing only has 16 green cards, I believe, in total. And it's really just four Bonnie, four Capone, uh, and then four of each of the laws. Um, so you're really just playing a high density of like threat cards. And then I don't even believe I'm currently playing. Matter of fact, I know I'm not currently playing any events in the deck. It's all gas all the time. Okay. So really saying no to like radical beam and guard points. So, yeah. um, all right. Well, on my side of the table, I mean, I know exactly what kind of cards you're about to play. It's going to be a lot of one drops. Uh, so I'm keeping a hand like mass deuce and I'm going to put those out on the table. Um, now, one thing that I kind of feel like I might have done, uh, I could I could do differently in the future. Um, on my turn two, I decided to play uh, Curly to Dan uh, instead of the Mass Deuce to really pressure your Jewelry Bonnie um, because, you know, it's very likely that you just don't use the ability of Jewelry Bonnie on turn two. Um, and then playing Mass Deuce there could uh, really influence that quite a bit. Um, instead, I played Curly to Dan uh, in order to pressure the Bonnie if you do tap it. As well as add some consistency to my deck because, you know, I am looking for more card advantage against you. Um, so that's why I went with the Curly to Dan, but I think it's very reasonable to have played Mass Deuce there, especially knowing that I have a second to back it up. Yeah, absolutely. There's also just the, a good warrant that you don't need to play Curly yet. You don't really need anything. Right. So you can wait. Well, the big thing for me was I didn't want to attach two Dawn to it on, the, on turn two um, because that would limit my ability to go wider. Um, but you know, it's not necessarily, you know, the correct play to go wider anyway. So with six on though, we are going to throw out thatch. That is an eight K character. Um, and with Uda's ability that it becomes 10 K very quickly. So pretty, pretty powerful, uh, play there that packs a punch. Yep. Very, very Dawn efficient too. You know, six oh, yeah. to eight and then the following turn, it's just one Dawn to make him a 10 K every turn. If you really wanted to, what was interesting was that you played, uh, your blocker law in order to pick up the Bonnie so that mass Deuce couldn't use its ability and pop it. And mm -hmm. so I, you took that line to play around that, uh, the mass Deuce ability. So I took the line of just tapping out to play an eight K. <laughs> uh, exactly. and, and the eight K really pressures your law here. And, you know, double law opening is going to be really, really hard to beat um, for me. And I think step one of taking care of laws is is to just swing with an 8K character um, so that law really doesn't look like it can block. So, I, yeah, I think pu pushing against it with an 8K is, is like one way to either just 
get two cards or a life. It invalidates the law, really. Yeah. The blockers, yeah. I that, feel like it invalidates. For at least the one swing it does, yeah. absolutely. And we're gonna go 5k here. And this is a pretty good attack for five because if you do block it, you know Thatch is coming after you. So uh, you really have to consider what you're gonna do there. Okay, and this yep. should just be a counter out. You Okay, interesting that you counter out with a uh, 2k there, although your hand is all 2ks and two jewelry bonnies, so. Right, so you value the, the bonnies for, for late game. Is that three you know, jewelry bonnies you have? This just did two. Oh, just, yeah, it's yep. just two. And double Otama as well, and double Luffy. You yeah. are just stacked on duplicates. All right, got a full house over there. <laughs> All right, so, uh, you know, I, I still have quite a bit of Dawn. Uh, after seeing you counter out there, I have to decide what do I want to do. You're at three life now. Do I want you to go to two? Um, we're, we're holding double Atmos, uh, or we're holding double King Do. We have an Atmos in hand. Um, we also have two copies of Moby Dick. We're going to want to deal with that at some point. 8K comes across. Now, this could be a 10K if I chose to with the Uda. Um, but, you know, that it's kind of irrelevant, right? Just at eight, if I get two cards out of my opponent's hand, I'm happy with that. Yeah, eight's fine. There's not really a need to push for more. Um, King Do here. King Do's good. King Do's a bit awkward because, you know, I don't have, uh, you know, I don't have the Don necessary to, um, I don't have a three cost in my hand. So, right, so the, the play is going to be Moby Dick. Um, and with one Don still open, now that Don could have actually went for the Uda to make the, um, to make the, the thatch, thatch of 10k. 10K. And we are going to put down Chopper here, replacing the Curly to Dan. We're losing, because of the laws, because of the 6k bodies, we're actually losing quite a bit uh, of the of the pressure that we could put on. Yeah, the, the two laws definitely made a difference with the early game pressure. I think uh, the only difference that would have made it feel a lot worse for, for me as a law player would have been if you had just played the Mass Deuce on turn one yeah. um, instead. Because it would have really pressured the fact that I opened with just Bonnie. Just Even Bonnie, if you yeah. didn't want to swing, it would really de-incentivize me from putting more cards in play. What's interesting is that your hand is filled with uh, these one drops that you just feel like you can't play because the mass deuce uh, exists. Exactly. Which is cool because, you know, fortunately you're able to just pay five for the for the law. But like that, you know, if you didn't have the laws, if you were having to lean on the Bonnies, those mass deuce would be uh, quite a lot. So, you know, it is one thing that I didn't put it on the table turn one and then attack down the Bonnie, but mm -hmm. it is another that they are just representing quite a lot and you have to play around them. Because yeah. if I had turned it sideways, I don't know that I would have had a, the ability to counter out with them. Mm -hmm. So then it would just be gone and it wouldn't be a threat at this stage of the game. So I will say they're actually, you know, looking back right now, there is quite a bit uh, of strength to not attacking with it on that early turn, so. Yeah, absolutely. And we're gonna double Otama. I think they're all going on the on the thatch there. Yeah, we have to do double Otama on the thatch just to get rid of it. Ten K is a lot, and then you also have the or the eight K is a lot, and then you have a seven K sitting behind it. Oh yeah. Um, and then also putting you down to one is just not an option simply because yeah. of the, the Moby Dick. Um, if I do attack and I, I can only push you to to one or zero, you know, you're threatening lethal or clearing my you know two blocker loss, and then I don't have a good way to to end the game. And this was a 4K on the 4K thatch. Now I could counter out, but of course you have your leader, which could become like 6K if it wants to. Um, I could I could at that point block with Chopper, but I don't know if you're holding like Vista or something that you were just going to take down. You know, obviously you can't Vista the 4K, but there are other game actions that would allow you to do so. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you're just trying to bait me out of cards, so I don't really want to overcommit on the thatch, knowing that I have, you know, a second King Do more Atmos in hand. You know, there are other options for me. Yeah, exactly. You're not really lacking in threats in your hand so losing the one that's in play is is not too bad i think what's reasonable as well is that you play two otama to get rid of it so yeah. you know you have committed some resources although it's lost so you kind of wanted to put those out i'm fully expecting another five drop blocker law here uh to come down to kind of say like oh i'm just recycle my entire board but you know of course we're looking at it now you don't actually have that uh that play available to you right now so but that is kind of what i was that could happen. Yeah, unfortunately, the hand was a little awkward with the two Luffy's. I didn't feel like I was in a great spot to play them. Um, here's where I considered thinking back where uh, like a better play would have actually just been a pressure with the blocker law here. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, kind of tag out for Luffy, swing again with uh, non-blockable to try to put you to zero. Yeah, so I mean, I definitely felt like you were giving me uh, quite a bit of time to establish my really expensive vanillas. Uh, you know, that like King Do is good and all, but if your opponent's attacking you with, with uh, 
7k over and over like it's only good for so long so yeah um, that it, yeah that is one thing i'll agree with you like maybe maybe you could have gotten a bit more aggressive it's yeah, hard to know that though i very much felt like i was very passive here and it didn't it didn't feel great at the uh end of the turn and that's when i, I started to think that it maybe had already just like started to kind of well, I don't know because the counter power in your hand is also quite low, and you're you know you're at two. I you know I'm playing like bigger attacks uh, at the moment where you start swinging with your six Ks. Um, they can't block anymore, so now Mass Deuce is going to be able to to attack you, mm -hmm. uh, and those are all cards out of your hand. And and right now the counter power that, that you have available to you is all two uh, Ks, and you just picked up you know Starter Law, but that of course you don't want to counter out with that. Right. It does represent one thousand counter power, but that's not exactly what you're looking to do. So, okay. And I, and I have Starter Nami there instead of uh, Searcher Nami. Now, we're, we're, we're a bit lower on Straw Hats in the deck. But we did still want to play the one-drops for the Curly Dance to make the deck feel a little bit more consistent than it should. Yep. And Starter Nami plays a little bit with the Uda ability. I can Uda ability and then use the Starter Nami's effect to still have access to the Dawn, making Uda a little bit free in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, so that feels... You know, like there's a good synergy there. I really like the idea that for with with starting on main play, you know, your one dawn equals plus three thousand across two characters. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah, no, it feel it feels better. It, it definitely like with starting on me, it feels like uh, the ability is a little bit cheaper, a little bit more uh, potent. Uh, mm -hmm. These are all good things for for the deck. Now, again, with playtesting, we might find that hey, the boat build boat build is not quite as powerful as like a straw hat build. Of mm -hmm. course, that'll influence how we play the starter Nami or not. Um, but either way, nine drop white beard comes down, uh, tapping me completely out here, and then we're gonna swing with a seven thousand Uda leader, and then we're gonna swing with three K and three K on the Bonnie and the Nami. Try and get some cards off the table here. Now, 3k comes across at your Bonnie. You have the option to block. Um, and I don't have a lot of attackers left. And then we looking at we are looking at King Do. We are also looking at the Chopper, which can attack. Yep. Yeah, and we do end up blocking here. And it's just because with our hand, we know that what currently exists on your board, we can easily just defend. Uh, so we do get to save the Bonnie, which is just a body in play. To lose two cards. Um you swing nine with the lose two two Ks. Uh, the math doesn't check out because if I wanted to turn this turn or try to, to clear your King Do in play, it's not really possible anymore uh, just because we're going to lose the other Otamas and the hand doesn't really allow for it. So then we have to like convert to just kind of going all in Yeah. from here on out. I mean, I certainly like what I just saw, which was, you know, a loss of two 2Ks there. Um, not yeah. looking forward to dealing with the two Capone gangs that you have in hand right now. That's, <laughs> uh, that, that does represent four blockers on your board that I need to punch through if I, you know, hope to deal damage to you. Yep. But, uh, that's quite you a know, lot. nine drop, uh, Edward Newgate is very good at dealing with the little blockers. True. So really, my only blockers that are really relevant anyway are just the, you know, the five drops. Very true. I mean, of course, it is two turns, uh, uh, you know, of smacking the Capones around yep. in order to finally punch through them. And, and you know, I think you're going to show us later that you, you can just block with the other one, but it doesn't feel great for you to play two characters out knowing, knowing that, that they're going to die. Right. They're mm -hmm. immediately, you know, two of them are really for one attack. Right. Yeah. And so Bonnie here picks up uh, promo Luffy. And that's a 2K in your hand. Also has a nice ability against me, which you did actually play out uh, very early in this game. And I was like, okay. You come across for 7k pretty early. I'm I'm going to be feeling some damage in this game. Yeah, it's it's not bad cuz like if you if you really play how I was playing it earlier where um I'm not trying to just swarm the board. You know, playing against red you can't do that. You lose the moment you put multiple people in play that are like multiple one drops in play and then your opponent plays, you know, Mastus into Vista into Nico Robin. That's that's just losing. I, what's really fun here is like I actually think the Mastus uh represented quite a lot of, you know, threat level to the law player and and law was able to just uh like counter like basically play around the mass deuce and not actually lose too many characters to it so yeah there's absolutely know. playability was, like against uh, that for sure it ended up being pretty good so i think you're right like having these alternate lines and strategies in your deck make a big difference when dealing with you know a wider audience out there yeah so. okay also i really needed the the straw hat ratio to be a little bit higher because I, I played searcher nami over the uh the starter nami Right, which I think is like more conventional. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think the starter Nami. I think I think I'm on one for for playing the starter Nami in this Uda deck, but I don't I don't think it's correct to play it in law. 
a after playing uh, quite a bit of it, I it just feels like you should just add a card to your hand. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you always want the card versus yeah. the extra dawn manipulation. It's really good for accelerating, like, I feel like probably earlier in the game. Uh, but, you know, you just want the Namis, right? It's yeah. so consistent. And I'm still playing the... Um, uh, what's his name? The, uh, the dude that puts a, a one drop in play. Dogra. Dogra, yeah. I'm You're still, still playing, playing Dogra in the deck. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had a game on camera the other night where uh, Dogra was like the make or break. Yeah. He got slightly ahead of uh, Nami with... I was playing uh, Red Green Luffy, mm -hmm. and I put Nami on the table. And of course, you know, Red Green Luffy's ability lets you untap uh, Nico Robin. Right. Uh, I think I said Nami. I meant Nico Robin. I'm, I apologize for that. But it lets you <laughs> untap your Nico Robin so you could actually, you know, kill two things in one turn with Nico Robin's ability. Right. Dogra allowed him to go one turn ahead of where he should have been. Start using his law ability before um, before he should have been able, should have been able to. Yeah. And I could not keep up. Yep. Yep. So Dogra, you know, in D certain situations, a very fine card. It actually makes going first with law a lot more playable. Oh, yeah. And it looks appealing. It's actually, like, correct to go first yeah. if you're holding the Dogra. Yep. You can't know that when you choose, though. No. <laughs> All right. So uh, was that a starter law come down? I think we were... I think I played it earlier? No. I think we uh, talked through the turn that I think that card came down. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we're going to see Capone drop on the table here. And we are staring down a massive board here. <laughs> now, of course, you are at one life, but you have three blockers on the table. Uh, and that Luffy, oh my gosh, you just have, you have the Titans uh, all assembled here. Yep. With a decent amount of counterpower in your hand, too. So it is looking kind of rough for Uda here. Uh, we'll see if I can get out of it with just Whitebeard. <laughs> yeah, I will say, though, that uh, playing the Capone here was definitely a misplay. I uh, should have used that two dawn and just attached to Luffy and then swung at life for eight. Mm -hmm. uh, you wouldn't be able to block it, so that means it's, it's going to force a card out of your hand because you were tapped out. Correct. Yep. Um, that was absolutely a misplay. That Capone just dies the moment you put two dawn on Newgate. Yeah, it forces you, you to you know allocate there. Right. Do and you, it means I'm do like, you feel like you could lose the Luffy here though. Yeah, because there's a second one in the hand. Second one makes that okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because you'd be down to three characters uh, with with no real game actions having happened. Right, and I still just have two Capones in hand. Okay. True, yeah, for, for another turn. So. Or one Capone and a Bonnie, but I believe we're about to find out that there's a third Capone in the life there. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll see it happen. And of course, Uda can make the... I'm, I'm still at two life, so you know, King Du is still uh, a 7K, and Whitebeard, this is going to be attack for 12K. Yeah. Um, hopefully we can get down to one life soon without dying uh, and have the Moby Dick online. Uh, that is that is oh, a no. risky run. It was oh, just a starter. Five, it was a blocker yeah, law. Blocker there. law, yeah. Yeah, very nice. Third blocker law. Fourth. Fourth blocker law. Yeah, you're right. Kingdu comes across for seven with the Uda ability here. I'm sorry, with not for nine with the Uda ability. Let's see if you decide you want to block with that. Now, two two Ks will completely save whatever you block with. So it is kind of risky here for me to just make this attack. So we are just going to counter out. Yep, just and stay alive. Go up to 10. Not risk losing the... Uh... Yeah. And what, the reason why uh, we did that is just because you yeah, have so much Dawn on. That. Okay, so you're just worried about me playing like a rusher and swinging on your on your, on your your law? Well, no, not necessarily a rusher, but just like didn't really want to lose the law. So if you decided to try oh, to I, not end the game... That's fair. I haven't swung with Uda yet, so Uda could definitely just go at the uh, law. Yeah. Okay. Because well, the thought process is, hey, you just block with uh, you just block with your law, mm -hmm. uh, and then you can two two Ks up to ten K, and you save that third card. Yeah, but and you, it, you the didn't. result is the diff is the same, except for I think in your in your line. Yeah, I I do keep one extra card. One so. extra card. You but still just it lose a law. It exposes your law. Yeah. Right? So you don't want to do that. And uh, you know you 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 look uh, pretty upset about the way that that turn played out. So you just uh, ruined the framing. Yeah. I did. <laughs> no, it's actually because I threw out my back today, <laughs> and oh, I was okay. trying to move. Are you okay? I'll be all right. All right. Well, I'm just old. Well, I'm glad you still came out to record tonight. It's uh, some dedication <laughs> you have for the Three Swords Productions. <laughs> I, you know, in my absence, you know. I see that you're um, you, so you're putting enough dawn on on all your characters to make them seven Ks. Kind of play around jet pistols. So you know, signaling to me pretty hard. Hey, we're gonna be taking some life this turn. <laughs> Um, is that you not wanting to attack into my bigger characters like Uda is a softer target? 
Yeah, we definitely want to try to end the game today. Uh, today, this today turn. for sure. Yeah. But uh, hopefully tonight. I feel like I got lost in the math trying to figure out exactly where the numbers needed to be allocated. I knew uh, I needed to play around Jet Pistol just because you're a red deck. Um, there may have been a winning line here, but I don't think I would have found it. It's tough because, I mean, you do have four attacks total. I have three life and a blocker, so I only need to get out of one single attack. Yeah. Um, I mean, you are holding another Luffy, but that makes all your attacks even weaker. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think I think you're right. It's probably really difficult for you to um, just, you know, KO me this turn. Now, you could take out probably the King Do or the Whitebeard as well. Uh, okay, we're going to flip over Whitebeard Pirates. Um, that card's going to look at the top five cards and add a white beard to my hand. Now, I am not in this current in this current iteration. I am not playing Jozu, so we have no shot at 2K here. Um, so we're just going to pick up the Marco, and hopefully if we don't need it, we can just put it on the table. And that'll be a pretty good Yeah, It's, pretty it's, good it's pretty good. Um, yeah, it's a 1K at the very least. Going against any red deck with starter Luffy is... It makes it a little worse, but... Mm -hmm. it's only if you're at zero so and luffy's gonna come across for seven here now of course i don't have a blocker so you no longer need to uh have that luffy ability activate and we're just gonna have to pitch two cards here and go up to 8k to get out of the 7k attack so now one more swing with the law here is what we have access to tap down this is where i think i went too deep well you grabbed that capone there mm-hmm I only saw four cards revealed. But I think you, you probably had five. I probably just missed it. I only saw four, though. But, uh, yeah, Capone comes down. It was the only target. Right, yeah. The other cards were red. Mm -hmm. I remember that. For sure. And then, yeah, we were trying to figure out exactly what to do. Okay, and you, you still have your leader ability here. Don't believe you've used that yet. No. But the only, the only line that I left myself with, which is where... You know, the, the next mistake happens is to bounce Luffy, play Blocker Law, bounce Bonnie, play the next Capone. And it's Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty intimidating, though. Four blockers, I mean, you have zero life, but um, four blockers, it's like hard to get through even with Whitebeard because I'm having yeah. to allocate resources to an attack that you otherwise, you know, it wouldn't need resources on it to get through. Um, you did put me at one life this turn, so you've successfully turned on Moby Dick. Mm -hmm. um, so King Do is going to be a 9k base with lead, with leader ability, becomes an 11k attack. Um, kind of a lot for you to get out of, especially, you know, if you're relying on blocking. So you know, I'm having a difficult time, you know, coming up with a line to get through. Um, that second blocker that you put down, third blocker was good. Even the fourth that you played last turn was fantastic. <laughs> uh, Whitebeard's going to come across for, that's, a, that's an attack for 14k there, and it blows up Capone, and I see you block with the other Capone. Like I said, I was having trouble coming up with a line, and then I draw my card for turn, and it's a Jet Pistol. <laughs> yeah, Jet Pistol was the perfect answer to this board. Oh, it was. Um, <laughs> without Jet Pistol, there's a good chance that we would have made it into, you know, a better end game for law. <laughs> um, I don't think that I could break through all your blockers if you still have jet pistol on the board or if I don't have jet pistol, you still have that blocker. Um, no, yeah, I couldn't lose and I would have two attacks with p potentially three, but uh, I would have starter law still in play. And then, I mean, it honestly, it doesn't even look great here with jet pistol. I'm, this is now an attack for eight and I have to consider, do I want to try and get rid of the law? Uh, or do I want to try and get rid of your life? But you're, of course, you're a five k, and the law there is uh, six, so it just makes more sense to go live here. Exactly. Uh, all right, so we're going to switch back to the booth. Okay, that was that was an Uda victory. Yeah, Uda won. Um, Uda did win. Now, of course, there were some dropped blinds, uh, and you know, of course, that jet pistol was incredibly lucky off the top. But. Yeah, there was definitely two turns that I, I can call back on. Um, Specifically, the line where we, we played the one Capone, seemingly for no reason, it just died. It didn't do anything. That was a waste of dawn. Yeah, well, to be fair, though, your board was like four or 5K characters so, or five cost characters and the Capone. So even if you had held it, I don't know that there would have ever been a moment where three, uh, three Capones could have come out at the same time. So I don't think right. that one actually changed the game as much as you think it does. 
No, it's less it can, about the it Capone can feel bad, though. existing. It's more that that Dawn was used incorrectly. Mm, that's true. Yeah. Very much should have just attached the, those two yeah. Dawn to the Luffy and swung for eight. Putting it on the Luffy was kind of what you were talking about and swinging. Okay, right. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, I, you know, it's important to... That's what's fun about watching these games back, and I've said it a bunch of times. Like, we're not making the correct play, but it's so much fun to, like, watch uh, those lines come back to bite us, and we can say, okay, well, if I'm in a similar place next time, like, I'm not going to do that again, right? So, right, exactly. Exactly. You learn so much by seeing uh, you, <laughs> all of us learn quite a bit by watching us misplay. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, and there are yeah. a number of misplays. There, you know, welcome back to Three Swords Productions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, uh, but it's a lot of fun, man. Um, uh, thanks for coming over. I'm sorry about your back, uh, but yeah. you know, I really appreciate having you here. I appreciate so. you letting me on. You know, it's Great. always good. All Sweet. Right. Well, if you're still watching, still with us, uh, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. And if you uh, want more content, we will be back tomorrow with more videos. Ring that bell notification. Oh. Look at that. I know YouTube things. Sauce. He knows all the YouTube things. All right, guys. So we'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>